Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is basically going to be a YouTube rundown and how much I made on my first year on YouTube and then my first year monetized on YouTube. So if you guys don't know, when you get on YouTube, you don't make any money at first, but you can work to monetize your channel. You can monetize your channel through what options YouTube gives you at, and I believe this is correct. I don't know, I'm past it, but I think as of time of filming, this is correct. 3,000 watch hours, 5,000 subscribers, that's when you get things like super thanks, memberships, that kind of deal. But the requirements have not changed for Google AdSense to the best of my knowledge. To be able to do Google AdSense, you need 4,000 watch hours, and this is in a year, and 1,000 subscribers. Some people can do it very fast. Some people, it takes a year, two years plus to do it. I pretty much got lucky because we've talked about this before. I had no filming, editing experience before this. The closest I ever came to doing YouTube anything was I was like an on-air radio announcer person on an AM channel in farm country for a couple years. And yeah, I did not make up what I said. I basically read the weather, read sports, read farm reports, and then played music. So yeah. <laughs> uh, so this was like a whole new thing to me and I really did just get lucky. And I think I'm just in a good niche because you guys know us crocheters will watch other people crochet and that'll rack you up a lot of watch hours pretty fast and you know anybody who crochets tends to like you know vibe with other people who crochet so like that got me a lot of subscribers really quick and by four months in I was monetized so I started in March 2023 and was monetized by July 2023 which the fun thing about that is all the like videos and views that I posted in like that March to July range, I don't get money for that. But now when I became monetized, any views that those videos get now, I do get AdSense for that. The Google AdSense thing is pretty confusing. Like I don't really understand it. And then you get paid a certain amount of dollars per thousand views. So some of my videos is like $12 per thousand views. Some of my videos, it's as low as like $2 per thousand views. So it really just like kind of depends. So it's hard to figure out how much you're really gonna make. This is why I tell people like YouTube's fun, but if you wanna make like a full-time career out of YouTube, you need like to be very lucky pretty much. And you do like work on this skill set, you know, once you get started. But for one, you don't get paid out at all until you've amassed at least $100 in AdSense. So like July, I did not make $100. So even though I was monetized in July, I did not get paid in July. August, I still hadn't hit the $100 mark. So I did not get paid out in August either. I think by September, I finally got that first $100. So and then you restart. Once they pay you out, you got to hit $100 again to get paid again. It wasn't until earlier this year, 2024, and I believe it was March, April, May, I got paid out three months back to back for the first time ever. Like, going two months in a row was the first time ever, but I was lucky enough to, like, get to three months. But I did not get paid out in June. So I've been at this a year, monetized for a year now since it's July, and it took a whole year to get paid out three months in a row and then I lost it for June. <laughs> so yeah, don't put all your eggs in the YouTube basket. YouTube is still fun though. It's good supplemental income. I've had people give me money, which is wild for super thanks once or twice. And that's just people like literally being like, I would like to give you some money today. Here you go, which wild blows my mind. That's a really cool experience though. And then it's gotten me some like little brand partnerships. You guys know that I work with Yeezy which is like a crochet kit company. And I did make a sale for them on like their behalf. So I got some like affiliate monies from that because like we're affiliated. So that's like a really cool experience. You guys know I also do like the Amazon uh, associates thing, which is also affiliate marketing. So anytime I recommend something, if you guys like trust me, you like go buy it. And then I get like some pennies for that. And that's also really cool. At last count, I helped all from Jade sell eight more copies of her book. So obviously 
as the author, she gets money for that because it's her product. But I did get like a little bit of commission on helping that. And that just makes me feel like I did a good job. And like humble brag, eight sales. She probably would have gotten those eight sales because I don't know anybody who knows me that doesn't know all from Jade. But still, I feel like I'm doing good. But yeah, don't put all your eggs in the YouTube basket because it's a very small basket. But I wanted to tell you guys... A, how much I made in my first like actual year. So March to March, even though I was only monetized for part of that. And then I wanted to tell you guys from July last year to right now. And then I'll tell you like my top five videos that have earned me the most money, which is cool because if you guys want to do crochet YouTube, perhaps you would like to steal my video ideas, which I don't call it stealing. I call it just using a good idea and like running with it because it's not like your video is going to be identical to mine, even if it's like the same setup. You feel me? So don't be afraid because I do this all the time to like scope out other channels if you're looking for content ideas because maybe there's something you could like either put your own spin on or something you can replicate for your channel but that's going to be different and we'll get into like what that is. I gotta think Katie being creative over here what? Put your opinion on something kind of vibe. I tell people to do that all the time. Use that for ideas. Don't actually steal like if someone told like made a video about their top five like crochet channels and then you pick the exact same top five and you mirror everything they say like don't do that. But if they're doing a top five video and you pick your own top five, that's fair game. <laughs> so yes, in my first full year, so from March to March, I made a total of $597.74. In that time frame, my top five videos were my video about Michael's Maker Place and how I'm not fully on board with that concept just because their terms and conditions are written in a way that's definitely very protective of them, but not very protective of me as the seller. And I have a majority of the comments agree with me. Some of them are like, this is just general like terms and conditions. Is it though? Is it? Because Etsy having a similar terms and conditions doesn't matter because Etsy is not selling their own product. Etsy is just a compilation of sellers and they sell their thing. Not only is Michael's doing an Etsy type thing, but they also sell their own products, which are going to be very similar to a lot of the stuff listed on their platform. So that kind of verbiage saying that they can like make derivative works from, and it's totally fair game because you licensed it to them when you got on their platform, just doesn't make me have the warm and fuzzies because they definitely have something they could gain from that verbiage because they have a physical store as well, whereas like somebody like Etsy doesn't. So like there's not a reason their verbiage should be the same, which I don't know if it is the same, but then I'm just using it as an example. I don't think any other platform that I could think of, go imagine they don't have their own physical store that they're selling similar products to. You see what I'm saying? So I don't like it. <laughs> now, it is worth noting that my legal experience consists of about three quarters of a degree in paralegal studies. I have a really eclectic resume. I've had like five different careers. Anywho, that's a whole other thing. I just get bored. But yeah, so like I'm not actually like a lawyer and I don't actually know 100% that this says what it, what I feel like it says. However, the law is not clear black and white. Like that's what precedent is. If somebody commits a crime, you have to find other case law that says why like that's bad and wrong. Or if somebody commits a crime, but they were like abused, you find precedent from like another case saying like this poor person was abused and was like allowed to unalive and she just like got some probation. So like that's precedent for this case kind of vibe. That's like really simplified, but either way you get the point. It's not black and white. So like if I could argue that this seems this way, um, somebody else could too. And then if you go to court with them, they could be like, well, if you read it this way, it's actually fine. So yeah, I don't like it. But all that to say is I'll link that video here and like down there if you want to watch it, if you've not watched it yet. And that video made me $50 in the last year. And my RPM on that, which is my like rate per thousand views, rate per mil, M-I-L-L-E, uh, which is basically rate per thousand views, was $12.21. Then we have one of my items I crocheted and my prices videos. And this is where I shout out Katie being creative because I first saw her doing everything I'm bringing to my market 
with prices videos. And she was basically one of the very few crochet channels that was doing, and here are my prices. I don't know why we're like hiding those, but I don't. So yeah, shout out to her because two videos, not my number two and my number three for that first year are both those kind of videos. And one made me $45.91 and the other one made me $36.97. Thank you, Kitty being creative. And my rate on those videos, one is $12.05 per thousand views. The other one, for whatever reason, and maybe I should watch that back because I want to know, is $15.32. And I, I wonder what the difference is. Maybe it's the time it was posted. But yeah, I would like to get in on that action. So I'm going to look into that. And then my last two videos in my top five are actually a part one and a part two, which is free no-sew crochet patterns to make and sell in under an hour. And I'll have both of those linked. I'll just have all five of these like linked. One of them made me $34.99 and the other one made me $27.24. But weirdly... The rate per views of per thousand views on those is very small. It's two dollars and eighty-one cents and two dollars and ninety-eight cents. So basically, just under three dollars per thousand views on both of them. But both of those do get a, like a lot of views. They're some of the top performing videos on my like whole channel. So maybe I should do another one of those. <sighs> See, I feel like I want to point you guys in the direction of free patterns because like everyone can benefit from a free pattern, but. I'd be lying if I said I went out of my way to scope out free patterns because I sure don't. I use Etsy pretty much primarily and I know that's like a really privileged thing to like have and say and do but I just really like me an Etsy pattern and that's what works for my business because I like to be able to print them out and like have them and I do realize that not everybody gets that. So I do like to do in these like free videos from time to time but I'll at the same time. That's not, I have to go out of my way to like prepare those videos because that's not where I'm living most of the time. You feel me? So that's real interesting. And now I'm going to tell you my top five and how much I made overall. So we're talking an entire year on the YouTube so far in this whole year on YouTube. And now mind you, the last bit was like $500. So we're talking March to July now. And mind you, I got paid out April, May, June, back to back. Nope. March, April, May, back to back. I didn't get paid out in June where this number like bumped up. I went from like the 500 and some change to $906.25. So basically in the last few months, I've made like $400. Whereas all of last year, I made like $500. So we're not doing bad. We are growing. But some of my top five videos actually did change. And I guess I'll tell you my average RPM because it does tell me my average RPM is $4.33. So I feel like that's kind of sad, but it could be worse. But yes, my first video for the last year that's made me the most money is a market recap video, but it's the market recap video where I explain that I made a big mistake and like all of my plushies ended up in the mud. So I'll have that linked if you've not watched that. That one's made me $71.44. And I don't blame you guys for wanting to watch that. I did learn though that Bernat Blanket washes up really good and Parfait Chunky washes up pretty good. And I was able to like salvage most everything, but it really was looking like hundreds of dollars in damage because like some of the plushies ended up stained. It was a whole thing. Anyway, the next one is that Michael's Maker Place video for the full year. I'm up to $68.79. Then I have an items I crocheted with my prices video. That's up to $47.60. I do believe it was one of the ones from that original top five. Like I don't see why it wouldn't, but. And then the next video is titled why the crochet market is completely broken, which I do admit is pretty dramatic, but I talk pricing in there and I talk why it's important to price like effectively and fairly for yourself. But I just, I've been getting heated lately. People will be like, no, three times cost. That's it. That's all you get. But then these are the same people that'll be like, well, obviously I'm not here to make money. There's like no way to like make a full-time income off a of crochet. Well, no, sh like let's, let's math this out. You guys are making like no dollars. So no dip, you can't make a full-time income. Like I don't, <laughs> I don't understand how they're not putting two and two together. 
I just don't. So that being said, I ranted in that video about the importance of pricing. And basically, you're limiting yourself if you're underpricing because then you're capping your income, which prevents you from being able to grow your business. And I got news for you, friend. Your materials are not the only expense in your business. They sure aren't. Are you paying for Canva for your marketing materials? Because that's an expense. Are you paying for your internet to like use your Etsy and like your Ribbler and everything to either buy patterns or to like list patterns online? Yeah, that's an expense. Are you paying to get into these markets that you're doing where you're making no money? Because that's an expense. So it's more than just materials. So if you're only factoring in materials, you're like already doing it wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> Usually I'm more politically correct, but I'm fired up recently about it. But I'll have that linked below, all of these. I can stop saying that. But that one's made me $46.75 if we've not discussed that. And then the fifth one on that list is the free no sew patterns to make and sell in less than an hour. So it's been a fun time. Obviously, this is not a big revenue stream if in a year I've not even broken $1,000 because like I can do a market and break that. Maybe not every market, but still. It is something and I am growing. I've basically made almost more already this year than I did like all of last year so like that's good same thing with like my Etsy income and my market income it's more this year than it was last year and almost more fully and it might be more for all of them well YouTube it's not but it's close but I think the other two I think it might be more but I'd have to look but yeah I've almost made more this year so far than I did like all of last year in my various revenue streams so like that's like a good sign but I'm still just trying to grow it still just trying to get it done and that's gonna be all for this video if you don't have an interest in crochet YouTube thank you for watching anyway and if you do I hope this is like setting realistic expectations because I can tell you it's not what I thought it was. It's actually worse. <laughs> it's a lot of work and you don't get paid for a lot of it, but it is fun and it has given me opportunities. So I am grateful, but definitely not the moneymaker I had hoped. Not that I thought I was going to make like thousands of dollars, but I just thought, you know, once I hit that first hundred dollars that I'd be able to do that regularly and not go like a month, two months, three months off before I get it again. So yeah. But yeah, that's all. And I'll see you guys in the next one. And bye.